Welcome back, Ragers. This is Streets of Rage 4. In part 3, we're hopping on board the cargo ship. After escaping the nefarious Mr. Y and his dirty money, his offer to make us not cops against him, but on his side. And we said, no, we will send rocket launchers at you in low resolution graphics. So does Cherry actually use her... Oh, yeah, she uses her uh, guitar and a, and a fire charge. Okay. Cherry is one of the better of the modern characters, as uh, my brother had pointed out to me. He loves playing as Cherry. Uh, she's fast. Her specials have a lot of... Uh, have a lot of, like, area of effect type action. So if enemies behind you, enemies in front of you, they're all going to get hit. She also has an extended throw combo. That's pretty nice. Yeah. The modern characters all are designed to uh, perpetuate combos because combos are key to this game. You have to get combos in order to get points. Points get you lives. They also get you high score and make you feel awesome at this game. What you don't want to do is play as characters like Streets of Rage 1 Adam because although he has a really cool special that you can only use, you know, every time, only once every time you have a star move ready, um, he is not very good at keeping combos alive. Because Streets of Rage 1 characters do not understand the concept of combos. I mean, his uh, his straight uh, looks to be relatively fast, but... Oh, dude, he's fast as hell, but he's too fast is the problem. Oh? Yeah, because um, if you execute a combo too quickly, your enemy gets knocked down. When your enemy gets knocked down, he has a chance to get backed up. Uh, to get back up. Lots of enemies in this game, bosses especially, are usually invulnerable the moment after they get up. You have to give them a second to give them a chance to try hitting you, and then they become vulnerable again. Okay. Francis can eat a dick because he can triple kick in the air. Mm, he also is apparently somewhat resistant to throwing projectiles. Now, there's some enemies that can outright catch your projectiles. However, because Kevin's and Frank's uh, have their hands in their pockets, no, they cannot catch weapons. Donovan can catch weapons, though. You gotta watch out for that shit. And this corridor sequence. So, uh, can you not actually space out your jabs with a uh, uh, with a Streets of One Rage, uh, Adam? You can, um, and that's one way to keep your enemy standing up so that you can get more punches on him before you knock him down and caught and risk either breaking the combo or getting hit. Uh, and here, at the end of a stupidly short level, is the boss. It's Nora. Hi, Electra. Oh, sorry, her name is Nora. Nora is able to turn the Galcias into Galcia! And as long as they have blonde hair upgrade, they have uh, anti-stagger, which means that you can damage them, but your punches will not stop what they're doing. Right. The best way Looks to take like they're out- still somewhat vulnerable to uh, the throws, though. They, I'm glad you, I'm, I was about to say, I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out. You are supposed to throw the blonde-headed Galcias because although they have anti-stagger, they do not have resistance to throw. Okay. What you want to do in this boss arena is uh, take your eyes off of the really kinky shit around and have a closer look at that nail board. If, if you can continue to hit enemies into the nail board, they will take massive damage. Especially amazing purple combo, 510 points. Very well done, gentlemen. Uh, and be sure also to break the wine bottles and destroy any other furniture you see in order to reveal the items. Galcias also will continue to spawn throughout the boss fight because that is the cannon fodder that allows Nora to upgrade them. Right. Circle of Pain. And throw. 250 damage. Yeah. Nora has been bested. So why is she named after the ship from uh, uh from the Hunt for Red October? I cannot say. It is possible that she was... To, wait, no. Hunt for Red October came out in 1996. Couldn't possibly have been an inspiration for the, the name of the character. Because, I mean, she's been known as Nora since the 90s. Ah, I'm, I'm, at least I'm I know that she. Uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm not entirely sure if she's named after the boat from the hunt for October, but I know she's named after a famous boat. I'm just not sure which one. Well, that would make a lot of sense because I mean, with uh, she was the boss of a cargo ship. I'm no daddy's girl. Floyd. 
Dumb no. beat up bitch. They didn't they didn't do the musical joke with him. Damn it. That's all right. All right, the old pier. Hey, you forgot to actually include the cutscene material, mister. And I forgot to edit out the part where we had to go back to the title screen except to show you how stupidly fast this game loads, which is why it's awesome. Yeah, we probably shouldn't have let her go back to the helm. Level four. Now, is there actually a pink variation on, on, Flo on Floyd's up pants? No, there is no pink variant on Floyd's pants. Damn it. And now we get introduced to Rubies and Diamonds. These these ladies are more recognizable as the Emmas and the, what do you call it? The Glorias, no, not Gloria. Um, they're, they're the ladies from Streets of Rage 3 who are uh, viewable as early as the first level. They are way more powerful in this game because they have homing kick. No matter where you're standing, if you are too far away from them on the x-axis, they will try kicking you. You have a couple answers to the kick. You could try kicking back, or you could try using your special. Dodging is relatively ineffective. Your best answer is to try attacking them in return in order to repel the damage. I would... Um, I would recommend the defensive special in order to stop the kick from hitting. Because it is re it is really annoying. Alright. Um, I actually like uh, uh, Floyd uh, aesthetically because he's this he's this big Hulk, uh, hulking cyborg guy, but at the same point, cyborg. I'm noticing that uh, that his speed, uh, even uh, even in this level where not a lot is happening, seems to be a pretty big detriment uh, for him. He doesn't have the ability to string combos that well. Uh, well, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that his comboing ability is is strained. Maybe maybe he's more vulnerable to combo breaks because of his speed. Observe also that Floyd is able to hold people and walk around while holding them. That's how big he is. He also is so big that he can hold two enemies at once, at which point he smashes them together for massive damage. Come on, Jerry, eat the salad. This is the stage six theme from Streets of Rage 2. Okay. Come on, grab, grab the money. Hold on. Damn it! What you want to do when there are healing items on the board and you have full health, try to use them for points. Um, they are very useful for points. Big bowls of salad, lots of points. Hey, Donovan. I'm gonna call a couple of hard pipe hitting Donovans to go to work on my homes here. Oh, knife guy. Caused a break. Yep, knife guys are just as shitty as ever. Watch out for them. Okay. Hey, Gerda, that arcade machine is wiggling in the background when we cause things to happen. I think it's important. So, how many ground slams does it take for it to, to fall through, uh, in through the dock? What does it take to grab him and throw him? Ah, shit. Right, shields. All right, now let's play cops and robbers for a second. Those are the cops. Those are the robbers. You let them fight it out, they will make the fight much easier. Yes, they will. Because then the only things you have to worry about are the enemies coming after you. Now, can Floyd pick up uh, the, ri the riot guards through their shields? No, riot the riot shield will prevent you from grabbing them. Damn it. I mean, it makes sense. I mean, why? Yeah, what the it makes sense, but it would be a pretty cool exploit for Floyd to be able to just bypass them with his uh, with his raw strength. Oh boy! Oh my God! Big combo! Big combo! Big combo! Don't lose it. Seventy six. Oh my God! Yeah! Excellent. Four hundred fifty five damage. Excellent. So have you and your bro actually managed to get up to 100 yet? Uh, yeah, yeah. We, there's a there's an achievement for getting a 100 point combo. Okay. Now use the Easter egg. No, I don't want to fight Blanca again. Zamza, he can eat dicks. <laughs> Fucking slash man. Of course, they would have picked one of the more annoying bosses from Streets of Rage 2 because Zamza's arena right here is, is just as terrible as it was in Streets of Rage 2. You can't tell where he's standing, so most likely you're going to be exploiting your lack of friendly fire to take him out. 
Well, he's almost dead now anyway. And that's why you should turn off friendly fire, because if both players are standing in the same place, he has he usually has no choice but to go right into your trap. Right. And yeah, we got full health, yay. 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 So pipe and a billy club. Yep. Um is that, it is ideal to have at least one weapon in your hands. Something you can throw, for instance. Yeah. Yeah. Hit oh, they're back to being called yellow signals. Hit them with pipes. That's a green light. Green means go. I sense a I keep from... hoping that Cherry actually has a hurricane kick, but she doesn't. She just has the, the, the guitar dash. Here comes the story of the hurricane. Bob Dylan been, is full of fame. You've been mentioning that tr track quite a bit recently. What's with that? Well, I mean, the first time it was it was more incidental. This time it's because there's an actual rock and roll around the battlefield. Ah. I mean, I've always considered Bob Dylan to be more folk rock than a rock and roll. It's... Yeah. So, who is this character? On the streets of Estelle is a new character in Streets of Rage 4. Uh, she is a police officer. And she is under the impression that you are the bad guys. Well, and from her perspective, we are. I mean, she's working for the police. And, um, yeah. The, uh, the, or if you recall, one of the big plot points of the last game was that the uh, police commissioners have all, have all been uh, replaced by robotic duplicates. Well, all the, yeah, city officials, the police chief, uh, yes. Um, and that, but that was the events of 10 years before this, before the events of this game. So some time has passed. However, uh, the Y Syndicate runs the police. Estel is a police officer. Therefore, the Y Syndicate runs Estel. Um, but we're going to be spending a little bit more time with this particular character later on. Meanwhile, she is just a boss and a rather easy boss at that. She requests backup. Specifically for more Barneys and, and uh, Ferocios. I love Ferocio! I love Pinocchio! <laughs> I do not love Pinocchio, honestly. I mean, uh. I mean, uh, When You Wish Upon a Star is a, pretty, is a very pretty track, but most of the rest of the movie is uh, like mostly uneventful. I look around and I see a lot of potential. You have potential. Oh, 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 my nose. Oh, um, um. <laughs> Geico, no. Mm, I actually thought that was a ro that was a robot chicken sketch, but okay. Fifteen minutes can save you fifteen percent or more on Pinocchio references. <laughs> That's quite a long time to uh, just uh, just for Pinocchio references, though. And so we have successfully crushed the enemy forces while police officers are continuously getting slapped in the face in the background. And in the next part, we're going to see some cutscene. We're going to start stage five. Be safe, everybody. Points. <laughs>